The first time I came to Catherine's, they had a, like a nude girl standing on in like a shell, and they said it was Venus on the half shell. And I walked in and I went, you know. It's an adventure. It's like the army, you know. A lot of drugs, a lot of sex, a lot of fun. <laughs> Los Angeles has become a regular party animal. We're not talking about any high moral standards here. We're talking about a band on the frequency of life where the... Yeah, life is a party. Yeah, party down. If, if you catch it. When you get in a room with a thousand heated bodies and you're all sweating simultaneously on the dance floor and you're ready to pass out, it's, it's a lot of people. And then you can go to another club and it's the same way, and then maybe you can go to another club and it's the same way on the same night. From the postmodern night spots to the post-punk underground dance halls, the nightclub scene has a lot in common with Baskins and Robbins. There are so many flavors. Anyway, I'm going upstairs. Wait, here, wait. Where else could you find groups with names like Bulimic Banquet or Thelonious Monster performing at clubs like No Wax for Mica, Egg Salad? We have Boise, Cleveland, Des Moines. <laughs> Those are the happening spots. And there's Flaming Colossus and White Trash A Go Go. He's one of our chief executives here at White Trash. <laughs> Sometimes it's a matter of sexual preference. More often it's a matter of dancing with the nearest available partner. But it's not so unusual to find club utants dancing man to man, woman to woman, and even man with doll. This is she's disco Barbie tonight dancing with me. More about that later. But first, you're probably asking the question, who are these people? Well, I suppose they could be your neighbor. We One wake day. up this way. <laughs> or your co-worker. I am a flight test engineer from McDonnell Douglas in Long Beach. Some of the regulars are closer to real life. There's L.A. style columnist Ann Crawford. I go out six nights, at least six nights a week. And some nights I go to, well, my record this, this month is eight, eight events in one night. And that's restaurant owner Mario Tamayo with a ponytail and Barbie doll. Barbie the glamour doll. This is the glamour puss Barbie. Yes. I will explain about Barbie, but later. But first, over there is Jeff Conaway. He co-starred in the television series Taxi. I grew up in New York, and so, uh, so you know that, right? In case you don't know that, it's 24 hours a day. And L.A. is growing. There is an art to cultivating the cool crowd, the hip wazee, not to be confused with trendy. And if you have to ask what's hip, you're not. Yes. Hip is being ahead of the time. Hip is knowing what's going on before it's going on. And what is the hip person wearing? Perhaps something like this. Well, of course, oh, a fool and other God's sakes, you can't run around without the accoutrement. But if I were to offer any kind of fashion advice, it would be wear any color you want to, as long as it's black. No, black is the is the Los Angeles underground uniform. What do you call this? I call this Aries' this nasty habit. <laughs> I want to take you on a holiday with this outfit. I think black represents the repression of the artist in a bourgeois society. Right. If somebody tried to walk in here in pink, they probably wouldn't let them in. Somehow the ever-hip, blackless Barbie made it through the ropes. I said we'd get to her. It's a passion. It's a de very deep and strong passion of mine. Paris-based designer Billy Boy escorted Barbie to a party held in her honor at the Upscale Stock Exchange. Boy is the author of the tell-all dollography, Barbie, Her Life and Times. When you look into her eyes, what do you see? I see uh, plastic. With all the kidding Billy Boy does about Barbie, he says she could teach her fellow nightclubbers a moral or two. I think Barbie has a very important moral message, and that is to behave always in the way in which you do the right thing. So who would have thought that in this world of the bizarre, the beautiful, and the Billy Boys, it's Barbie, the plastic one, with the real values. <laughs> Go to the corner of 1st Street and Alameda, across from the Atomic Cafe. 
From there, you will be directed further. If you're calling in regards to it being Danny's party, well, it will be rocking. You won't find these nomadic nightclubs advertised in the Los Angeles Times or the LA Reader. If you want to hear these notes from the underground, you have to know someone who knows someone or have a phone connection. So go or die. In some ways, the underground nightclubs are even more exclusive than places like the Stock Exchange in Vertigo. Wow. We have to pass muster with a doorman. Here, your passport is simply being hip. I've never been to a legal club. I've only been to clubs like this, so it feels right. The crowd we get is the up and up, and they like to dip their feet in these warehouses. You know, they, they, come, from, they come from all walks of life, and uh, they like to dip their feet in the, the dirt and slime every now and then. The owners of these clubs are incredibly young. I'm talking about people in their mid-20s and 30s. It's as though the expression, don't trust anyone over 30, has been changed to don't dance with anybody over 30. The nightclub impresarios are a bit like werewolves. They come out at night. Their prey is abandoned buildings. This was used for a club um, <laughs> by some guy who decided that he didn't want to pay rent. So he smashed down the gate, and it's condemned, you know, you're not supposed to be here at all. But he thought it'd be great because a lot of people came, and they paid to get in, and we had a great time until the cops came and took the guy away and stuff and said, you can't come here, this is condemned. So it only got used a couple of times. But it was one of my favorite buildings to go to. It's four Mariah Flint is the publisher of A Guide to the Underground, and she says she doesn't um, like to party like any sneaky. other way. I think a lot of people out here like to do things they're not supposed to do. Maybe they're rebelling a little bit. Um, you know, if you're allowed to do it, you don't want to do it. If you're not allowed to do it, it's more fun. And What's it like in there? It's, it's really big. There's toxic waste in the corner, and um, it slopes down, and then there's about four stories up high, and a lot of little rooms and catacombs to goof off in. Out-of-the-way locations are part of it, but there are lots of answers when you ask the question, what makes a club underground? In the simplest terms, it's a place that doesn't have much in the way of permits or licenses. Do you have a liquor license? Do you really want to know that? <laughs> well, it depends on where we are, because sometimes we have. I think the song is going to run out. But on most cases, no. Most underground clubs don't. Another identifying mark of the clubs is that they stay open after the normal 2 a.m. curfew. Pure and simple, you're doing something illegal. Um, dude, that's, a, that, that, that's an understatement. We got busted once about six months ago. And in club land, at least in L.A., they're sort of a... Let's just say that it, it wasn't like they went after us, it's like somebody else told on us, who was jealous. When you multiply all the sweaty bodies on the dance floor times the cover charge that usually starts somewhere around $6, you'd think that this would be a lucrative line of work. How much are we talking about? How much will you take home this year? No, no, no. I, 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 I have enough problems as it is without the uh, Board of Equalization coming down on me. I gotta pay these guys more enough. Than, more than fifty thousand? No, I wouldn't. No, we're, no, I don't think. I don't think we're. I don't think I, I. We're in five digits. So the motivation isn't necessarily money. Why do you do what you do? Um, for the passion, and I also to social climb in the uh, Hollywood community. That's an honest answer. It's a very candid, honest answer. Yes. You want to social climb? Yeah, I, I, be, I become very popular and famous on the underground level. There's a new club opening up, though. It's called Jackie's Big O. You hear about that? that? Yeah, but that's, that's underground? It's Friday, though. Friday underground. Nothing is permanent about these establishments. When you factor in the competition, the threat of getting busted, and just plain boredom, we're talking about planned obsolescence. Of course, there's always the option of going straight. It has to be a, an interesting space, an exciting space for it to be legal. For it to be illegal, it could be in your backyard. And um, is, is, is your backyard open? because we're going to be looking for a space in a couple of weeks. And until he finds a new space, no empty warehouse or rundown loft will be safe. So go or die.